Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Four zero four Marshall one seven zero twenty three Angel Eight Executive Push Time three two Approach Button fifteen. Four zero four Marshall Bonds one seven zero twenty three Angel Eight Button fifteen uh, Push Time two two. We want you to we want you to get the kingdom of God. That's right. We want you to make it into the kingdom. We want you to rule over all nations on the earth. But the only way that's gonna happen is if you repent from your sin and learn God's commandments and keep them. That's the only way that that's gonna happen. Is if you learn God's commandments and you keep them. You understand? Now I'm gonna ask you this. There's a commandment for us today. Leviticus chapter 21. We're going to show you a commandment. We are here to restore the communities because most of us have been taught wrong. We've been taught wrong by the churches. We've been taught wrong by our mothers. We've been taught wrong by our fathers, right or wrong. What's your name, brother? I, I'm going to deal with you. Ask me the question. Come here. Ask me the question. What you got? Do this have to do with anything as far as a way of life, like a different way of life? Yes, sir. This is the way of life for the Israelites. That's what we're reading right now. This is the way of life for us. Get uh, uh, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. All right? This is the way of life for us. What about the five percenters? Right. The five percenters are a result of your oppression. That's how they came about. Right, this was given to you before the creation of the earth. Right here, what we're reading about. Right, five percenters. Where did they derive from? Who's their forefather? Where did they come from? Tell me. Tell me more. Tell me more about five percenters. Muhammad. Muhammad. Who? Elijah Muhammad. Who? Which one? Elijah All right. Who taught Elijah Muhammad? Oh, you tell me. I mean, you you know you. you, you I'm I'm learning. What's the What's the brother's name? Muhammad. I'm learning. Hold on, we're gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. All right. No, we learning together. No, I'm not learning right here with you. I'm telling you right now. No, you tell me. I was just asking you if you knew already, because I was gonna skip it. But since you don't know, all right, we just gonna catch you up, bring you up to speed. But because you know who uh, Elijah Muhammad was. No, I know who Elijah Muhammad is. I know who he is. You know who he is? Yeah. Yeah, I know who Elijah Muhammad is. But what I'm, I, what I asked you was who taught him? Who taught Elijah Muhammad? Who taught? Him? For, 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 what's it, how you say his name? Farah Muhammad. Muhammad taught him. A white man, look like that, right here. You can look it up. All right, he disappeared on a plane, right? Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. this is this is the the person that taught. That, that, so when I say that that religion of five percent is it, it's a result of your oppression, what I mean is these are your oppressor. This is the oppressor of the so-called black man on this earth. Am I right or am I wrong? So Farah Muhammad was a white man. Yes. Yes, and that's who taught Elijah Muhammad. All right, and that's where you. That's what comes five percent is. That's what comes Moors. More science. That's what comes uh, the nation of Islam. All of these things come from the white man. You understand? Well, the, white man. We, we the white man. Then. Right, because that's a good question. All right? <laughs> that's a good question. All right? Now, I want you to get Psalms chapter 17, verse 13. Yes, sir. And Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. That's yes, him sir. right there. Right. Show him. Right. All right? So we're not just out here, you know, because we. You know, we take this serious, that's what I'm trying to say, no right? So we study these things, and we really want to reach people like you that's sincere about improving their lifestyle or their way of life is what you call it, right? We really want people that want to do that because we have the right way that came from the only God, the most high God of this earth. This is the right way. Those other things are derivatives and spinoffs from this Bible. They're, they recite certain things 
in all of those different religions. Right. All right, but this is the origination right here, right from creation. Right. All right, so this is what you need. Tell me what I need. Right, read what you got. <laughs> Psalms chapter 17, verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked. Deliver yourself from who? From the wicked. So this was a prayer of our forefather. He said, Lord, deliver me from the wicked. The wicked, there's a wicked people on this earth. Exactly. This is the wicked people of the earth. The so-called white man, the so-called white man today is the wicked people of the earth. They're really not white. They're pink in pigmentation. Right. The Bible calls them red people. All right. So the red people on this earth today, they are the wicked by nationality, by, by blood. You understand? By the spirit. That's, that's just what God said. He decreed that. Right. But guess what? Those people are being used as a sword by the hand of the Lord. So just like you have a child and you wear his behind out with a belt, right? Well, the Most High God has wicked nations. And he will wear his chosen people out right here, the Black Spanish Native Americans. He'll wear them out with the wicked. So we've been worn out in America, in Babylon today, by the wicked. That's what you see on the news, all right? That's what you see. That's what you see. Is it wicked black people do? There are. Why, why are they wicked today? Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31. Is it because of the white people? I'm going to show you why. That's a good question. Very good question. But we're going to read the answer out the Bible. So you understand the concept that I told you. The belt that you use to whip your kids, all right, is for discipline. Well, the belt that God used to get us in line was the other nations. That's the sword of the Lord, right? So are there wicked black people? Are there wicked Israelites? Are there wicked, uh, 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 blacks and Spanish Native Americans? Absolutely. How did they become wicked? Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. What does the Bible tell us to do? And choose none. No, it says to envy not what? The oppressor. Read it again from the top. Envy thou not the oppressor. The Bible tells us do not envy your oppressor. Do we envy our oppressors today? Yes. Yes, we do. All right. God says don't do that. All right. So if we... If we were not envying the wicked, the wicked, the wicked, right? If we were not envying them, what community today? Let me give you an example. What community today has more stealing, robbing, and lying going on in it than ours? What community has more than that than ours today? There is none, right? All right, now watch this. This land, all right, that in America, I don't care where you go. You could be in the ghetto, you could be in the suburbs, you could be in the in the mansions, you could be in Bel Air. It don't matter where you go. You understand? This land was stolen. Period. It was stolen. It was taken by force. It was murdered. Especially VA. <laughs> Especially Virginia. I'm talking about everywhere. Yeah. It was stolen. You understand? So there's robbery, there's murder, there's killing, there's lying. But that started before you even was a man. You were still three-fifths of a man. You won't even, you was just a damn cattle. You was just a a, 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 a product, a, a cargo, merchandise. That's what you were during this time when all this lying, robbing, killing, stealing, thieving, all this stuff was going on before you got here. Well, now you gotta ask yourself, how is it today in our communities there, there's no other community with more robbing, stealing, killing, lying, thieving, adultery, all that stuff going on than our community today. Why is that? Because we have envied who? Who did we envy? The white man. Yes. That's how that got in our communities today. That's how that happened. But we don't realize that today, when we was brothers, I'm talking about we chained up on a slave ship like sardines together, trying to make it over here. We was brothers back then. Brothers, brothers, we won't hold on. We won't. We weren't really thinking about anybody else causing harm to anybody else but the other nations. At that point in time, we was oppressed together. Period. Now we oppress each other. So That's what we do. Question: How can we realize it as a whole for it to happen? Right. How, how do we what? How do we realize it as a whole to see everything come together? We realize that by reading the Bible. Go back to John chapter 14. Right now, what you're receiving is the Holy Ghost. All right? We're giving you the Holy Ghost. What you thought the Holy Ghost was, it probably wasn't it. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of the Bible. So the Holy Ghost is going to bring me tears because what you... It, it might. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not worried about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Because what you saying to me yeah. is bringing me to tears. I'm so the, what why? you telling me is it's coming from, from, the front, from the front. It's not coming from the Bible or something that I read. It's coming from you. But I'm reading the Bible. You're receiving the spirit of this Bible. I'm just being used to take the things out the Bible and to give it to you. That's all I'm doing right now. That's all I'm doing right now. I'm just taking the things out of the Bible and I'm giving it to you. You're receiving it. Those things are bringing you to tears. That's why I said you're receiving no. the Holy Ghost right now. Me the kids. No, it's the Bible. Word. No, it's your word. It's not. It's God's words. No, it's your word. I'm speaking God's words. I'm just a for, mouthpiece. For the people who can, they, I'm just a mouthpiece. Can't read or don't read. Yeah, read that. For the people that can't no, no, read drop that. Read. Get, get first John. Get John 14. I'm gonna show you something. Read this. John chapter 14 verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The what? Which is the Holy? No, read it again from the top. Yes, sir. But the Comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. So right now you're being comforted, right? The words we read, are they bringing comfort to you? They bring a comfort to you, right or wrong? Right. You're receiving the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. Whom the Father will send in my name. The Father is sending you this comfort in his name by us. That's what's happening right now. We sent, we, we're, we're bringing you the comfort out of the scriptures. You understand? God said that that would happen. And God said he would use men that you see today to do it. God said he was going to do that. And what word are we speaking in accordance with? His word. Come on. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So how do you understand what we're bringing out? How does a whole nation get the same understanding? Well, you got to read the scriptures. You got to go through the scriptures and realize that you and your people are not black, not African-American, not Hispanic, not Latinos, not uh, uh, Puerto Ricans, not Haitians, all right? Not Mexicans, all right? Not any of those things. You have to realize that you're an Israelite and only this, the scriptures in the Bible will teach you that and bring them to your remembrance. Because without reading this Bible, this isn't even your book. It's not your history. It's not relevant to you. But when you, when you start reading, if you can't read, then there will be brothers like us that can read and we're going to bring it to your remembrance. Can you read? Yeah, I can read. All right, so that don't apply to you. Do you have a Bible? No, it applies to me. Do you have a Bible? Yeah. All right, so you have a Bible and you can read. What's preventing you from diving further into your history, your culture? The What's preventing you from doing can't that? Read. I, I can't right now, we're talking about you. Give me that no, in no. Second Ezra chapter 14. Set thy house in order and then reprove thy people. You know what I want? Yeah. All right, we gonna, it is about you first, 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 first. All right, has to be about you first. The reason that I say that all right. The reason that I say that is because if you are a drunk, right, and I'm a drunk too, and you really care about me, right, and you really don't want me to be a drunk anymore, right, in order for me to listen to all the wisdom that you have about me and my drinking problems, what do you need to do first? Talk to you. No, you need to do something first. No, I need to talk to you. You need to do something Because first. you say something don't mean that I'm going to listen to what you I'm say. I'm going to say it again. I want you to pay attention. To you. I'm going to say it again. I'm gonna, I want you to pay attention. Both of us are drunk. You're a drunk. You got an alcoholic problem. Okay. I'm a drunk. I have an alcoholic problem. Right? You care about me though. You understand? And you have discovered the knowledge to stop being an alcoholic. You found out how to do that. Okay. You know how to stop being an alcoholic. I don't know how to stop being an alcoholic. You understand? If you truly care and love me, and you want me to listen to you, the first thing you need to do in order for me to believe you is for you to do what? Think and focus. And to do what? Are you going to continue to be an alcoholic or are you going to stop being an alcoholic? I'm going to continue until somebody speak to me. No, you know already. Let's say you know already. Oh, you know. You oh, know. Shit. You know already. I'm an alcoholic. You're an alcoholic. It's, you got the knowledge. Gotta stop. You got to stop being an alcoholic right. before you can tell me to stop. But you have to, I mean. Hold on. You have to stop being an alcoholic before you come. You can tell me to stop. But if I'm looking at you and you still an alcoholic, I'm going to be like, man, maybe he don't really got the solution because He's not even applying the things that he, he says is gonna help me. You understand? That's hypocrisy. We can't be that today. So it's very important for you to fix yourself and then go out and fix your people, right? Well, you need help to fix yourself. You do need help and we all gonna fall short. I get that, all right? That's gonna happen, 
all right? We need help, we need each other. I'm not negating any of that, all right? But you can't just be committing willful sin, not trying to change nothing, and expect that you're gonna make change in somebody else's life. It's not gonna work like that. Right. It's not going to work like that. You understand what I'm saying? Read what you got. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Come on. Man. Now therefore, on, read, set thine house listen. in order. The Bible says, you set your house in order. With your house is you and your spirit. Your spirit, your house is your temple. So the Bible says, you do that first. You set your house, read it again from the top. Now therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. The Bible says, set your house in order first and then do what? And reprove thy people. Does it say, and then? Come on. And reprove thy people. So, and then reprove thy people. All right? So the first thing it said, set thy house in order. The second thing it said was reprove thy people. That means that something came before the, the, the second. You understand what I'm saying? So it's the same way with everything that we're doing. Before you can go out and try to teach your whole nation the Bible and what they need to do to get themselves right and to repent, you have to do that first. You get built up. You get rooted. You get strong. Then you can go out and you can teach everybody everything that you learn. You can share it. You can go through the scriptures with them. You can teach them how to change, how to do all of these things. But if you yourself ain't making efforts to do that, then don't don't go out to, to, to deal with anybody. Sir. Deal with yourself. You understand? Keep, keep, deal with yourself. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.